Joe Biden's poll numbers are not looking good, especially with young voters. So he might well not be the Democratic nominee in 2024. So if we have to choose someone else, the op-eds have already started to make suggestions. And these are from people, I want you to understand, that very much have your best interests at heart. For instance, Joe Concha, who used to be a host on Fox and Friends, he thinks maybe it should be Hillary, given the competition. And his argument is, uh, there may be a rematch coming in the 2024 race for the White House, but we're not talking, God help us, Biden, Trump. <coughs> Instead, 2016 Democratic nominee Hillary Clinton is an interesting prospect to consider, particularly if an 80 something President Biden decides not to take uh, a second term. So, uh, why would they go from Biden to Hillary? Well, he considers a couple of other options. He says Vice President Harris, she's at 28% approval, Andrew Cuomo, no longer governor and thoroughly disgraced. <laughs> governor Gavin Newsom, he had to spend time and resources just to avoid being ousted in deep blue California during a recall election earlier this year. I don't, I don't even think that's a particularly good argument against him. I think there are much better ones, but whatever. Yeah, that's a um, terrible argument. That has nothing to do with anything. And I don't like Gavin Newsom, but- I don't either, but that's that's not why he wouldn't be the co the candidate anyway. He won easily in that in Exactly, that yeah. and that's just state level Republican <laughs> nonsense, whatever. <clears throat> so if not them, well, obviously we're not gonna consider any progressives. So instantly you go back to Hillary Clinton. She's 74 years old, he says, which is like being bathed in the fountain of youth compared to Biden. <laughs> Oh, okay, I guess. Now he has more to say about this, but I, I have look. I, I don't follow Joe Concha's career. Uh, maybe he's become like awesome since Fox and Friends. Uh, this feels like trolling, both because it's a former host on Fox and Friends, and because, and I say this as a person who published op-eds on the Hill. It's an op-ed in the Hill. Um, this seems like it's intended to infuriate us, but I don't discount the possibility that there are some establishment Democrats that do sort of pine for Hillary Clinton and would love for her to be the candidate. Of course, okay, so that's my <laughs> reaction to does Washington want it. Uh, now here's my reaction to the possibility, no, <laughs> <laughs> there's no, there's no amount of buckling up that would be sufficient oh for that scenario. <laughs> you cannot brace for that impact, it would be just epic disaster. Landslide. <laughs> yeah, um, so. Uh, this goes in the bucket of uh, p people never learn because they're paid not to learn. All right, so the Joe Concho part of this is relevant. It's his op-ed, and so the question is: Does he is he just spitballing here, or is there something in the zeitgeist in D.C. where people are starting to actually uh, think about this and it's bubbling up? Right. Well, Concho is a, a rare non-insane Republican, so mm -hmm. I'll give him that. Okay. okay? But I would say, whether he agrees or disagrees is a different question, that he's more in the corporate Republican wing. And when you're in the corporate wing of the Republican Party or the Democratic Party, then you're in the zeitgeist of DC. And you that's the upside is you have a sense of what's gonna come next, you know, because people are talking about things and there's buzz about things, right? The downside of it is you're completely disconnected from the rest of the country. And you live in a bubble that exists only in Washington and can and we can't communicate with that bubble, the bubble doesn't communicate out. It's just an island of insanity, a different kind of insanity than Trump. <laughs> it's the insanity where Hillary Clinton is popular and, mm -hmm. and people love the establishment. And they can't wait for Hillary to bring the status quo back. Yeah, Because that's the problem with Biden, he's not status quo <clears throat> enough, right? He's not conservative Democrat enough, he's done nothing enough. Like Hillary Clinton would do more nothing. <laughs> that is not a winning message in the country. The country's in a massively populous mood, but inside the Washington bubble, they're like, so you're saying Hillary? <laughs> no, you're not. No one is saying Hillary outside of that Washington bubble. And they've totally lost track with the rest of the country. So she would have a 0% chance of winning. It's an absurd idea. And if we're bringing Hillary back, then I'm bringing Bernie back, okay? Mm -hmm. All right, apparently age is not an issue. So the timeless wonder can rise again, <laughs> fair. Well, well, you know, uh, Joe Concha actually was on Fox and Friends yesterday morning talking about how the American public has turned against Build Back Better. They don't like the things in the Build Back Better Act. So if you needed any kind of information about what Joe Concha says about being plugged in with the American public, yeah. The guy's totally off the rails on that one because the polls show us the exact opposite of that. Yeah. And that might be why he's saying, what about Hillary Clinton? Why don't we just bring her back? Yeah, let's just play all of the political greatest hits, right? Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. You know, why, why not find another Bush to go ahead and throw in the mix as well? Because that's <laughs> just where we're headed. It's this damn dynasty of the same people all the time and the same advisors, the same consultants, the same people in the bubble you're talking about. And that's why it's always the same. Because it's not just the, the candidates, it's the old guard itself, right? Yeah. The actual establishment, the people running the parties, the people behind the scenes, the people raising the money, you know, uh, same consultants, advisors, all of it, it, it doesn't ever change until you know generations die off naturally. Yeah. And I, I, I until we can pierce the bubble, <clears throat> I don't know how we change that. Because I do think Hillary Clinton's name will likely be floated for 2024. Uh, you know, as you said, Biden's numbers are terrible. Harris's numbers are terrible. Neither of them have emerged as a real leader throughout any of this this past year. Yeah. And so, who is next? Who is on deck? You know, Bernie. Yes, he's he's getting up there. That's going to play against him. Plus, the establishment will never let that happen. You know, you're not going to get a Katie Porter coming in. You're not going to get any member of the squad, you got gonna end up with probably Newsom or Hillary Clinton. I mean, really, that's what we're looking at. Or if they can clean them up enough, they may even try to throw Cuomo in there. Who knows no. what these people are capable of? <laughs> Which but Cuomo? That's what Farron. we're looking at here. It's a, it's a complete horror show right now. Yeah, well, I, I do agree with that. I think the one thing potentially we have on our side is that the next couple of years are gonna be absolutely devastating. And I think that you're gonna have a lot of anger. And I think we had a lot of anger leading up to Bernie's run. And I think Bernie broke through because he was really speaking to a lot of frustration. Well, we are gonna have a lot of frustration coming up. So that's my only hope that some progressive might be able to break through this. But I do wanna read just a little bit more of this sort of conventional wisdom that's floating around out there. In the Washington Post, Fareed Zakaria has an op-ed titled, The Puzzle of Joe Biden's Unpopularity. <laughs> Which I just think it's awesome. I don't think puzzles should be tough. I think they should be very easy. It makes you, it's like a power fantasy. Anyway, and then I came across, um, this is an article by Chris Saliza, 11 Democrats who could replace Joe Biden in 2024. He doesn't even rule out Kamala Harris. Like he thinks, sure, I mean, she's the vice president, why not? He also says Pete Buttigieg is the most naturally talented candidate in the 2024 field. Jesus, can you imagine those debates? And then he has a list of nine other people. A lot of them are like not national figures. They're there's stripes, the centrists of different stripes. He does throw out Elizabeth Warren and Stacey Abrams as nods to progressives. He doesn't consider anyone to the left of either of them. And I, look, it's still years away, so I guess who cares? But this is what they're prepping for. Like, I don't think Chris Eliza would have a problem with, with Hillary Clinton um, being the nominee yet again. And it's just, it's already bubbling up. Okay, so last couple of things here. Now, first of all, 2024, as things stand now, hopefully things will change, is shaping up to be epic disaster. So Republicans have a massive advantage. Democratic leadership is the worst. Uh, they couldn't, like, the only person Biden could beat in a race might be Hillary Clinton. Uh, so like they have no <laughs> chance. And so, but there's no progressive that, a, that the corporate media would ever, ever give any oxygen to, let alone fight, give positive coverage to. Any progressive- I mean, they didn't to Bernie and he got really far in 2016. Yeah, okay, I hear you, I hear you, but- Corporate media will try to destroy any progressive who runs, and mainly through the silence. Like, oh yeah. Like for example, we here. Let's give the common example. Nina Turner. If Nina Turner runs, they're like, oh, we're not going to cover that at all. Where's Trump? Where's Trump? I love Trump. Let's give him a billion dollars more. Two million dollars more. Okay, Nina Turner. <laughs> we're not going to cover that, right? <laughs> so that's what's going to happen. Just keep it real. I'm being honest with you guys. Mm -hmm. So progressive winning is very hard. Well, and then when you look at the the establishment candidates, it's a it's a nightmare. Biden is awful, Kamala Harris is awful. Inside the bubble, they love Pete Buttigieg. I, I know tons of people in New York and DC, and I swear to God, in their bubble, they think that he's like a he would electrify the country. They're like, he worked at McKinsey. Like he would just come in there with his PowerPoints and got oh my God, he is so I mean he Harvard. He's so smart. Oh my God, we love him. Let me ask you a question. You have to choose 2024, it's Buttigieg 
or it's Clinton. Oh, nothing's worse than Clinton. So you're like, really? don't okay. don't create headlines. I don't that, know. Right, and and now <laughs> you're gonna say like, now John's creating a headline. Jenk says Buttigieg should run. No. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, look, so it's it's a nightmare. It's a nightmare for 2024. And inside the bubble, uh, it, there's like they they also do this for Republicans, like. All of the media together, ABC, CNN, everybody was like, Chris Christie, Chris Christie's such an important, powerful, important person in politics. And then he sold like three books and two of them were to his grandmother. And she passed away, so I don't know who it was. No, I don't know any of that. <laughs> but he sold nothing <laughs> because they think, oh, Chris, people love corporate Republicans like Chris Christie. We love him, don't you love him? And the answer was, no, we don't love him. They still are on Marco Rubio. Oh if you God. get a poll in Washington right now, they're like, oh, most statesmen like blah, 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 Marco Rubio, obviously, right? Like, no, he's a boy. Everybody knows he's a boy. And then, the, yes, there's some level of trolling and ambush here with the Hillary Clinton. This is a, a classic corporate Republican ambush. Like, well, look, if the, the Democrats really wanted to do something right, I mean, they'd run Bin Laden. I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm just saying, okay? Um, so, but usually they'll throw out some corporate Democrat. And like Nancy Pelosi, and because they they know that other people inside the bubble will be like, wait a minute, he's on to something. People love Pelosi. <laughs> <laughs> they genuinely believe in saying things like that. Anyway, so the bottom line is, and 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 last thing about Free Zakari on the puzzle of Joe Biden. Guys, I need you to understand how they they just have no idea of the outside world. I know you think these are smart people, they're powerful, they're rich, they're some famous. They, come, they gotta know something, don't they? No, Free Zakaria, who appears to be intelligent, I read the article, it's amazing. He's like, I, I, I don't know why, I mean, Biden is so likable, he's done so many things, and the economy's in such, I don't know. Like, are you kidding me? He's done nothing, mm -hmm. he's the world's worst self-promoter. He thinks bipartisanship and the filibuster are more important than things like paid family leave that poll at you know 75% and lowering drug prices that poll at 90%. And he's like, no, I think that the parliamentarian is more important. And Fareed's like, well, that's obviously true. <laughs> Doesn't everybody love the parliamentarian, <laughs> right? This is such a mystery, no one can figure it out. So, and those guys are in charge of the party. So they're going to nominate a whole heap of Buttigieg's and you'd be lucky to get out with no Clinton, right? <laughs> you think they won't bring Terry McAuliffe back, <laughs> right? There is no end to how bad corporate Democrats are at politics. So you gotta, at this point, you gotta hope for a miracle. Otherwise, it's almost certainly gonna be a Republican who wins. Yeah, I, I don't think there's really any way around it, at least where things stand right now. Obviously, yeah, we got three years. Things are gonna change, but the question is, are we doing anything to change them in a positive way right now? Student loan repayments begin on February 1st. Yep. The White House has made it clear, we're doing nothing about it. We're not going there. And so even though Biden promised 50,000, whatever it was that he was gonna forgive, he's not doing the simple things he could do to try to show people just a little bit of what good Democrats can do. And as long as you hold that away from them, you're literally taking money out of their pockets, it's gonna be a bloodbath. And he's not doing anything to right the ship at this moment. And, and the guys, the, the reason why I say it's nearly hopeless is because Biden is incapable of changing. He's not gonna go and be like, that's it, I'm drawing the line on Mansion and Cinema. I've had enough of these corporate Democrats. I'm gonna call them out and I'm gonna put real pressure on them. And we're gonna get rid of the filibuster. We're gonna pass all these bills and people. No, he no. agrees with Manchin and Cinema anyway. It's all it's all a lie. The ten thousand dollars that he could get rid of student debt, he promised it. It was a super clear promise. He could do it with executive authority. There's no question he can. He's choosing not to do it because he was lying. He the only time he told the truth was when he was speaking to his best friends, the donors, and he told them nothing would fundamentally change, and the donors love that, and the country, the rest of the country, despises that. There, Fareed, I solved the puzzle. Thanks for watching The Young Turks, really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR, so those are super fun. But you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all that 
All you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video. Thank you.